All right, so we're really happy to have Yong Tang visiting from Kiev, who will tell us about self-directing dark matter and sterile neutrinos. Thank you. Good morning. So this is the outline. First, I will give an introduction uh, about this dark matter evidence very briefly, and then three controversies for the cold dark matter. And the main part uh, is this two. Uh, the self interacting dark matter, another one is uh, an action with steady neutrinos. I finally will give a summary. So, we all know there are many, many evidence for dark matter from uh, the rotational curve of galaxies and the gravitational lensing, and the light sphere structure, and the same the uh, isotropics. So, uh, all uh, this, those evidence mainly come from gravitational interactions. We don't, uh, we still don't know the particle region for dark matter, but there is a, a, a popular uh, candidate, uh, WIMP, which is a kind of cold dark matter. Uh, cold dark matter means then its velocity and it's uh, eligible for uh, structure formation. So uh, together with cosmo uh, cosmological constant. Uh, now the CDM uh, is very successful and light scale, uh, you can, uh, which is summarizing this plot. You can see that uh, uh, the horizontal x is the uh, mass scale. If you divide it by the uh, density, then it's a, a distance uh, scale. And this uh, vertical uh, x is the mass variance. Or that are row over row. So you can see uh, this This is uh, one. Uh, so and the large, uh, at large scales, this uh, uh, density fluctuation is very small, so it's kind of linear theory. But, uh, and these uh, small scales, they, uh, this uh, fluctuation is uh, large. So uh, in these small scales, uh, uh, the linear theory is not uh, 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 useful. People usually use the embodied simulation. That's where the controversies come from and the small scale. So there are three uh, controversies and small scales for cold dark matter paradigm. The first one is uh, called Haskell versus Cohn problem. Second one is a uh, missing satellite problem, and the third one is two big failure problem. So this is uh, these three problems are nicely uh, reviewed in this paper. So and I will give uh, introduction uh, one by one. So first one is uh, related with the uh, dark matter density profile. So although we know there are uh, many evidence for dark matter, but uh, we don't know the how. It it distribute in the galaxy. So people propose many uh, density profile uh, based on um, observations or fit to data. So you can see uh, there are many, many kinds of uh, density profile. Uh, this is the distance of our uh, 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 solar system uh, away from the uh, Milky Center. So at large scales, this, all, all this profile um, um, uh, match, but then the small distance, this uh, profile can uh, have many, many uh, much different. So you can see uh, the NFW profile is a blue, blue line. You can see it goes to higher, higher value and near the center. But for some a profile like uh, isosomal profile or a vocal profile tends to go to flat in the center. So, uh, 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 but we don't have a, a first principle to uh, drive this profile. This all uh, uh, for embodied simulation, the uh, Casper profiles are predicted. So I can uh, those profile mm. and but. Uh, <coughs> but uh, this profile, uh, profile are uh, import from the uh, rotational curve. We all know that uh, the binary unknown cannot uh, uh, 
<coughs> account for the uh, uh, location curve, this uh, dot, uh, the data. If we end uh, dark matter, we can uh, fit the data much better. But uh, if you end a uh, uh, CASPI profile, then you can see uh, it should give a uh, relative higher velocity for this uh, rotational uh, galaxies. Uh, if you uh, replace with the core profile, which is just the some profile like this, go to flat, uh, uh, which uh, I will call the core profile, so you, you can fit the data better. Yeah. Mm, but uh, we, uh, the code dark matter prediction is this one, custom, uh, custom profile. So this, this is the first uh, uh, controversy. And there are new results on uh, embodied simulations that included volumes which seem to... Yeah, I think uh, now, recently there, there is some, um, some papers try to include the volume effect. Yeah. Because uh, in our, our times, computer is not so powerful, they don't include the... So, so that when you say the cast is without the volumes in the embodied simulation, uh, th this is not from simulation. This is just a uh, for analy analytic calculation. Yeah, for this is uh, this profile just uh, provided by this uh, analytic formulas. <coughs> and the second one is the missing satellite problem. So this plot shows that uh, uh, it's uh, the projected dark matter distribution of a simulated contact map header, which uh, has the same uh, size with the Milky Way galaxy. So uh, you can see there are many, many uh, bright spot, spots, which are the uh, sub halos, dark matter sub halos. But uh, uh, the, the, uh, this circles marks the uh, most ma uh, the number of uh, no Milky Way satellite. So maybe the uh, there are only nine, but now I think they observed more, maybe now 12. But still, there are many, many uh, uh, other white spots uh, missing. So the num uh, numerous small subheaders far exceed the number of no near free satellites. So uh, some satellites are missing. So the third problem is the too big to fail. Uh, the central density of these subhellers uh, in the left broad, uh, left panel, uh, which is too high because we have a, a, a Caspi profile, so which has a more um, more mass in the uh, uh, halo. So its mass is too high to host the dwarf satellite. This is the dwarf, uh, dwarf satellite in our galaxy. Uh, uh, with this uh, mass of subhello. They should predict the velocity distribution higher than the observer. So uh, there's another plot which shows that uh, from the simulation, they predict that there's, there should be some uh, satellite uh, along here which has a larger velocity. But we only observe this uh, a low moving satellite in, the, in this region. So, uh, <coughs> So there are uh, many two possible solutions. One is from ionic physics, another one is from dark matter. But uh, uh, um, uh, I will focus on the uh, this second second part because uh, uh, mm, these three controversies are still uh, under debate. People have not uh, uh, come into a consensus. So. Uh, some argue that uh, ionic physics is uh, surely is important, but it's not sure that it can solve the uh, dark matter dominant uh, dwarf satellites. So, uh, but if uh, ionic physics cannot solve the problem, then dark matter uh, could be a very attractive solution. But the, there are three uh, solutions. One is the warm dark matter. The warm dark matter, with warm dark matter, there is a, a suppression in the matter power spectra, so it can solve the missing satellite problem very easily, but it cannot solve the other two problems uh, because uh, still it has a uh, 
high density profile in the new center. And for decaying dark matter, uh, its lifetime is required to uh, around, around the same scale of the life of the universe, which um, is kind of uh, in tension with the same constraint. <coughs> so this one is also uh, still in tension with the uh, data. So I will focus on the soap uh, solution, the self interaction uh, method. So there are many, many discussions. So what is self interact matter? They, they have some, uh, its name is misleading because dark matter surely can interact with it itself. But uh, this uh, specific uh, self interact uh, self interact dark matter refers to the uh, dark matter, dark matter scattering cross section is around this range. Yeah, so it's uh, the same order as nuclear nuclear scattering. But dark matters can still be the usual wind weakly intact dark matter. Uh, for this plot, this uh, dark matter annihilation to other particles which determines the radical density, this uh, cross-section is still around the, uh, weak, uh, the weak scale. But uh, it's a self-scattering cross-section uh, if mediated by a light mediator, then it cross-section is like this. Here I, I, I ignore the velocity of this dark matter. So you can see if the mass uh, for dark matter is around TeV, but if the immediate mass is on MeV, it could be a huge uh, difference, like 10 to, uh, 10 to 12 uh, differences. So the usual wimp can still have, can still have a large uh, set for scattering cross-section. So the, the set for scattering uh, uh, large cross-section can have an uh, effect on the dark matter uh, density profile. So uh, the, uh, the infalling dark matter is uh, scattering before reaching the center of the galaxy. So that uh, 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 its uh, distribution is isotropic. Also these uh, collisions increase the entropy of dark matter phase space distribution and lead to a uh, dark matter uh, halo profile uh, with a uh, uh, shallow density profile. So it can I solved the class uh, uh, versus core and to big to fair problems. But the, uh, the, the missing set problem I cannot solve, which can, we need to int uh, introduce another uh, relative these particles. So uh, this MEV mediator can provide the right uh, agnostic scanning cross-section for T beta. So which, uh, with the right cross-section, then the, the density profile for dark matter goes to flat near the center. And, uh, but there are constraints for... Sorry, what do you mean by, this is to the mm -hmm. MEV dark matter, sorry, the mediator is for the density. It's for the relic density, right? Really or, density? No, the MEV is for the size of the scattering. Mass of oh, for the strong interaction. Yeah, okay. just not. But this is only if it's elementary. Yeah, yeah. If it's composite, you need to get the right size across the interacting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There are constraints from astrophysical um, object, from um, bullet cluster or elliptical uh, halo shapes. So these constraints, uh, uh, then there's and the the cross section for the uh, dark matter scanning cross section was smaller than this, around this range. Otherwise, then uh, you know you can see that if the cross section is too large, then we we don't see the separate uh, of uh, dark matter and with the ionic uh, particles. Also, since the scattering uh, tend to make the halo um, isotropic, then we don't have an elliptical halo shape. But this is for this is for the velocity of dark matter around this range, it's so, uh, 1,000 km per second. But for the galaxy, it's around 200 km per second. So we need a, a velocity dependent cross section. So, which is provided if we have a light mediator. So, in, in the positive range, 
is um, uh, a very easy cross-section. But in the fast movement, if the mass of the dark matter is momentum, it's lighter than the mediator, then we have um, uh, this no photo to uh, formulas. So then the cross-section could be large in the small velocity range, but tend to uh, decrease very fast in the uh, large velocity range. So it can satisfy the dwarf. Uh, dwarf is like uh, along here, about 20 kilometers per second. We have a large cross-section in the small scale, but very small cross-section in the uh, large scale. So uh, we can show with a very simple example with uh, uh, this symmetry. So uh, usually people consider a globe symmetry, but uh, there are some reasons uh, um, which you expect that the globe symmetry are not re uh, respected by no positive or And uh, the, 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 there are arguments, for example, uh, in this paper, they argue that globe charges can be absorbed by black hole which then eva evaporate. So then um, this symmetry is broken, global symmetry. But they also in, in spin theory, these people argue that there is no global symmetry uh, there. So symmetry must be gauged. So suppose uh, we have a, a, a global symmetry for some dark matter particle. Uh, and this is dimension five operator, which is, uh, um, it's supposed to uh, 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 induced by quantum gravity, but it, it can respect the uh, gauge, the gauge symmetry in standard model. So, uh, but if we calculate the uh, the lifetime for the dark matter particle, then it's around here. So, which is uh, like ten to four seconds, which is much much uh, shorter than the age of the universe, unless this a uh, mass. Uh, for dark matter is very small, or, the, or this coupling, effect coupling is very, very uh, small. So we need a, a gauge symmetry to protect this uh, stability for the dark matter. So we gauge the, this, uh, this really symmetry. And we introduced the uh, extra U1 um, dark symmetry, dark gauge symmetry. So dark matter has uh, charge one, but we have dark Higgs, which has charge uh, three. So we have such kind of coupling, and uh, um, this uh, this is a standard part and this uh, dark matter uh, part. So there, there is a, a kinetic uh, <coughs> kinetic mixing from the uh, this U uh, one X and also dark Higgs and dark matter X. Th this is uh, the potential. It, it seems to be very complicated. But Sorry, uh, X mono X mono is what is the uh, new it's not the new gauge boson? Yeah, X mu is it's a new fault, so the new dark fault, yeah. which for the discrete symmetry. Yes, yeah. And then you have a kinetic mixing with the ordinary aperture charge. Yeah. Okay. And then you have phi is your dark, dark. matter candidate, which is now... Oh, no, uh, X is the dark matter. So what is the phi X? So phi I said is it's dark X. Higgs. Dark Higgs. Why you need a Higgs? To brief, brief this gauge symmetry. Oh, to Z3. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is just uh, the trick to be able to get to the discrete Z3 from a U1. So you introduce your boson as a, you introduce your dark matter as a U1. Yeah, yeah. And then you break it to Z3. Yes. But do, do, why do you need Z3? Well, what can just be a U1 potentially broken? You said that, uh, maybe I missed that. Why do you need a discrete symmetry? Yeah. Oh, still we need some uh, forbidden some uh, 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 operator to this. So you don't want that to decay in the end. Yeah, yeah. I see. So that's the, the, the final discrete symmetry is to, to make it stable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to sorry, I'm trying to understand you about it. So you start with the U1, you get it, then you break it to a discrete subgroup. At this point mm -hmm. this is like an arc parity, the, the amplitude will not decay anymore. Yeah. Uh, and you have a discrete symmetry in the end. Is that any reason why string theory would like to have a discrete symmetry rather than I don't know. no? So mm -hmm. what makes you feel think that the global symmetry which is discrete, is still protected by string theory. And since you s use the argument that yeah, you don't want to have global ones, right? Mm -hmm. So it's actually still a global one. So are the you know, discrete symmetry better than global ones? So better than, you know, not global, but, but the continuous ones? Since this, uh, uh, this discrete symmetry is a um, relic of this case symmetry, mm -hmm. then 
because if you want to break this uh, uh, discrepancy, then you broke this gate symmetry. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking if you have an answer. I don't have the answer. I, I don't know the. Uh, I don't understand this uh, argument from string theory or concurrency. But if you uh, I think one should never use arguments yeah. one doesn't understand. Yeah, you see that this this term. If you have a group symmetry, fine. But uh, since the, the argument says that. Uh, this global symmetry, global symmetry is bro um, broken by congruity, and we have such kind of operators. But that seems like you're, yeah. you're not left with any symmetry in the end. You're in this case once, right? It's fine. Yeah. It's, but I, I understand the model building. I don't have any problem with that. I'm trying to understand if one goes through the pain to actually need all these arguments, where in the end these arguments are actually really used, right? If at the end you see left with Z3, you see left with all those symmetry. In, in super semi, that's the adparity. Nobody knows where it is, which is a good thing. But so at the end of the day, you have a, a gauge point, a, a U1 in fact matter, which uh, with a gauge person, uh, which is now has been broken spontaneously to a discrete subgroup. Yes, and that's the point. So with the uh, symmetry broken, then we have this cubic term, which uh, is a uh, invariant on this. This is just rotate by uh, uh, this space. So the, there are some limits for this theory if this uh, black photon or black Higgs are very heavy. So basically, uh, this uh, only this term, black matter interacting with Higgs, and this term, pip term, matters. Other, other particles are very heavy, so. It's uh, similar to the uh, group case. And, but, uh, and if those couplings uh, vanish, then only this term, this is the usual Higgs portal dark matter model. So dark matter interacting with Higgs directly. So uh, because we have a cubic term, we have a semi annihilation process, uh, which says that dark matter, two dark matter particles can annihilate to one <coughs> dark matter plus another uh, uh, unstable pipe or uh, the standard pipe. So there in the um, Boltzmann equation, we have an additional contribution from such kind of process. So there is uh, 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 one half here, because the dark matter only uh, decreased by one. So uh, we, can we can define the contributions of the serial annihilation the total uh, annihilation. So this is uh, this equation is solved uh, by using micro omega. So uh, we can show the radical density and the direct search bounds. So these three bounds uh, means the uh, zero one hundred max and uh, zero one t uh, one year data projection. So here they, uh, now they don't have data, so it's so only a projection. So the blue band marks the uh, only uh, Higgs portal of dark matter. So if only this coupling matters, then a radio density constraint is to the blue band. So we can see in the low mass region, it's already excluded uh, by uh, Lux, except in the resonance uh, region. So um, also, uh, if uh, if this um, this three is uh, low symmetry, then we, uh, we, okay, and we don't have the low mass dark matter. Um, dark matter mass must be larger than the uh, much, much, must be heavier than the mass of Higgs from here. So they have a, uh, they they can annihilate to a Higgs directly. So it can uh, evade the constraint from Max. But it can uh, uh, probed by the zero uh, one t in the near future. But um, but if we have a local D3... Sorry, yeah, but just, uh, I'm trying to understand. So the last, the upper bound comes where you said the, whether you, the, is this the mixing with the Higgs that uh, allows you to have the correct relative density, right? So the upper bound is that the, uh, uh, yeah, is uh, the uh, Higgs exchange that saturates the relative density. Yeah. So that means that if that's not the Higgs exchange, all these dots you have are still allowed, mm -hmm. right? So right. This dot is still allowed, yes. Yeah, so, so the dots are still allowed, and that means that which processes win? Uh, for oh, the you can see that uh, 
second process. This is the process of wins. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is the process of where you have this is self interaction. Is it this it, this is a self interacting uh, ah. cross section or what? Uh, this is not actually the self interacting uh, process. So what is this change in the middle there? This is still attack matter. Hit X. Yeah, X. So it is itself, I mean it's self interaction. It is, uh, yeah, it is, it's the, uh, it's this uh, quick turn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So, so I'm saying that if you neglect this self, this cubic turn, mm -hmm. then it is the Higgs that uh, thermalizes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's the blue line. Yeah, blue line. And that is what is mostly constrained. Yes. If at this point you have also the self interactions, then the you have less effect from the Higgs, and then you have these dots. Yeah. So you're scanning the parameter space. Yes. So to understand, so these dots corresponds to larger value of lambda three. Yeah. Okay. And then this is a very stupid. I need to understand. And you're saying that if it's dominated by X, then Lux is already put in strong constraints. Yeah. Okay. And if you have a gauge theory, ga gauge, uh, a gauge of the three, then you have a gauge boson and Lux, mm -hmm. then you have a new uh, open yeah, channel. Space. So okay. then you have a large, uh, so you, you could have a low mass dark matter. Mm -hmm. So that, this is a, so that we have a, uh, since we have a dark Higgs, so if the mass of dark Higgs is on MEV, then we could have a large uh, uh, self scanning cross section. So which, uh, this cross shows that if the mass of dark matter is around TEV, and the, uh, the dark Higgs mass is around MEV, then we can provide a large uh, scanning cross section for small scale structure uh, problems. So, set types are related with the standard neutrinos. So, uh, standard neutrinos um, are motivated by neutrino oscillation experiments and also to solve the uh, uh, accelerator or reactor and uh, the linear or Romney. So, uh, although this, all these experiments are not consistent with each other, but uh, 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 there, there, there are indications that maybe just different mass range or mass angle. So also there are um, indications from CMB data that a uh, small amount of uh, relative risk particles, or could, you can call that dark uh, uh, radiation, quick disk, so which, uh, which uh, we have uh, these two parameters. For uh, example, we could uh, increase the effective lump neutral number by uh, 3.6 uh, with the mass, the mass around uh, 8.5. This is from this paper, which is uh, 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 before the uh, bicep 2, but uh, with bicep 2 data, it, it does not change much. And, uh, but uh, I should, uh, Point out that this this uh, fit uh, depends on uh, which data set you choose. Recently, there is a paper says that there is no implications for uh, that uh, uh, effect number of neutrinos. So, uh, also this uh, with the uh, right amount of hot dark matter, it can help to reconcile Planck uh, the bicep two uh, um, on the value of uh, scale to cancel ratio. So uh, basic 2 gave a R value around the point 0.2, but uh, Planck data constraint that uh, it should be less than the point, uh, the, uh, the point 0.1. So if uh, uh, they could uh, uh, relieve, relieve this uh, tension by uh, make the spectrum running, so they introduced the running index for the spectrum, then they could, uh, then they could uh, uh, break this data into uh, consistent. But it can also, uh, by uh, introduce uh, some uh, hot dark matter, so it, uh, with this three paper, they show that uh, then uh, the group fit in like this, so uh, plant data and the uh, S2. But there's also the possibility that the you know, bicep background is something uh, for But I know that is the big major problem with bicep how they analyze the background. Foreground. So foreground. Yeah. Foreground. So maybe the disk can start in any case. Uh, ah. <coughs> uh, so currently the uh, 
the view is that we need to uh, wait for the data from Planck for the foreground to have to have a better understanding of where this figure is. So it's uh, a possibility to just have a different models of inflation. So I'm just, I, I won't consider this as yet final. Yeah. <laughs> it's the least of the trustable ones right now. Okay, the, the, uh it's very easy to just introduce uh, uh, one species of uh, one species of stem tuna. Uh, there are difficulties uh, uh, from cosmology, so which such a, a mixing parameter from the from the neutrino oscillation data. So neutrino oscillation in the early universe can bring this stem tuna into some equilibrium. Then each species of uh, species of uh, stem tuna can contribute to. Uh, uh, Effect number of neutrino by one, so which is highly constrained by uh, by BBM, CMD, and uh, large scale structure uh, data. But this is not uh, true in case there is a, a large lepton symmetry, or there is a large uh, self interaction uh, interaction for standard neutrino. With this self interaction uh, for a standard neutrino, it can induce a metal potential. So uh, this effective uh, missing angle between standard neutrino and uh, active neutrino is given by this formula. The theta zero is uh, just a uh, missing angle in vacuum. So with uh, a, a large uh, several interaction, the metal effect uh, comes in like this. So you can see, uh, suppose uh, uh, maybe you are familiar with the MSW effect. MS the W effect uh, means that this term cancel this term. So if the, uh, the theta zero in a vacuum is very small, then theta uh, effect you uh, miss angle is one. Uh, no one is okay, it's one. Maybe this is two. Uh, the type. So the the miss angle is uh, uh, forty five degree. But uh, if this effective potential is very large compared to one, then uh, the, uh, this effect uh, miss angle is highly suppressed. So then uh, a neutrino oscillation uh, cannot bring standard neutrino into equilibrium in the early universe. So the accurate uh, analysis is involved uh, with the solving the kinetic, uh, quantum kinetic equation, which is less uh, less uh, uh, discussed in this paper. So uh, why we discuss the neutrino? Because we can connect uh, it with the dark matter. We still have another problem, which is missing satellite problem. So if we we identify the self interaction for dark matter with the self interaction with the neutrino, then there is an interaction between dark matter and the neutrino. So the interaction between these two particles can induce or cut off uh, in the matter pulse spectrum uh, by collisional damping. Which you can see then there is a damping in the uh, uh, metapod spectrum in the uh, small scale, uh, small scales. So and then it can solve the missing set problem. So this uh, this uh, black knight means uh, uh, the uh, effect from from the warm dark matter. If you have a KEV uh, warm dark matter, then the spectrum is like something like this. So it, it get a cut off from this. Uh, if uh, you have an interaction between dark matter and some relative uh, these particles, then you have an oscillation behavior, which is similar to uh, silk damping for uh, CMB. Sorry, so now you're actually mixing a possible sterile neutrino with the dark matter. Yeah. So the, uh, the mass for in order to for this mechanism to work. The mass of the V is also... Still, I uh, choose to uh, MEV, because the MEV is uh, required by the, the dark matter sector if we want to solve the, uh, the cusp over source core and the too big to fail problem, then the mass for the media ratio around MEV. This is something like TV dark matter, right? Yeah, TV. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, if you have a dark matter, uh, consistent uh, consistency for the uh, for uh, self-interacting dark matter to work, the 
okay, the constraint kind of here. So the dark matter should around P, uh, PV, the mediator should around MEV. So they, because they are constrained from osteophagus. Uh, they also discussed uh, the, uh, the connection with the uh, uh, neutrino or normally. But in their paper, they can uh, only put this experiment to uh, consist in two sigma. Uh, they introduced the, uh, one MEV and the one EV stem neutrino. So only this EV stem neutrino uh, is responsible for this uh, anomaly. So you can see that. Uh, what do they need the MEV sterile neutrino for? Anyway, I think that because they don't want this one contribute to the effective or uh, uh, ineffective, so they choose to uh, have the MEV, so it, it's not in equilibrium. Uh, so, but what does it do besides not being in equilibrium? Oh, because you uh, need to have a, uh, um, so you have a, in, in active neutrino, you have two, at least two uh, masses. So in the in the ma uh, uh, neutrino ma uh, mass matrix, okay. you still and you at least you need two standard neutrino. Yeah. So you, if you <coughs> have only one standard neutrino, then it's a four by four matrix. Mm -hmm. Then you still, okay. uh, you can't provide two massive active neutrino. So let me show you in in this paper. Then uh, we can actually introduce more standard neutrinos. And, uh, and, and it can give a uh, better fit. So we introduce a two right hand phase signet, which is N is a totally signet. Uh, signet and uh, the uh, standard model gauge symmetry, uh, gauge group, and also this uh, exterior one gauge symmetry. So this is the usual uh, CISO uh, term. But, uh, we have a dark gauge, a dark photon, the light mixing. Dark metal chi, also a dark, uh, dark uh, formula. This formula is introduced uh, because we need uh, some uh, dark Q cover for this formula, so it can mix with this uh, right hand gate signals. This term. Again, we have dark Higgs and the Higgs portal interactions. So, to provide this MEV mediator, this dark gate symmetry need to um, <coughs> broken at the MEV. So maybe it's Psi? Uh, psi is dark, dark formula. It's formula. So it can have a... a is that the dark matter? No, dark matter is chi. Yeah, so dark matter only has a gate interaction. Dark gate interaction. Oh, but I mean, I guess the question is, if Psi is dark, if there's a quantum number associated with that, then for instance, it can be stable too. So I assume that you're not making that stable because it makes... I mean, technically, this is a sterile neutrino. In which oh, but it has a human gauge. Yeah. But it does mix, okay. Does so, mix. how many fields are there for the side? Is that a direct thing? Yeah, dark matter. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it has an accidental um, T2 symmetry. Mm -hmm. It's a formula, so <coughs> it's a stable. So, but why do you need psi? Psi is a. Uh, <coughs> Because we need mixing, yeah, uh, this right hand neutrino, yeah. So, because the. Can't you make a right hand neutrino to carry automatically the new one? You mean this one? Yeah. No, then we don't have this in action. Ah. So, so, this is a model neutrino. Yeah. So, it cannot. So, this is, okay. so, so, this is a right hand neutrino. Yeah. Right hand neutrino that uh, couples to. <coughs> The couples through X chi, the dark matter, mm -hmm. via the gauge boson mm -hmm. of the dark matter, via A X, another U U cover set. Yeah. So there are you can notice there are many mixings, the black mixing. But this uh, the the unit, once the sorry, once the neutrino couples to the neutrino couples to the standard model fermions, mm -hmm. it couples to the dark sector. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to can I say, uh, I don't need that anymore. I, I don't need, yeah. the, but the, this is just uh, allowed by symmetry. Yes. Yeah. But this cup is very small because if we, we have a MeV uh, dark photon, so it must be smaller than 10 to minus 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, because yeah. I, I would say that you need it before when you do not have, uh, well, no, you actually never really need it. 
which is also always coupled to, mm -hmm. to the fourth code. Mm -hmm. So it's just an allowed term. Yeah, it's allowed. It's very normal. And the scanning actions can lead to fix mixing, so we have uh, two uh, mass uh, eigenstates for the uh, scanner. Also, this uh, Yukawas can generate neutrino mix. So, actually, the neutrino uh, mass matrix is 7 by 7 because we have uh, these three active neutrino and also this uh, uh, two right hand uh, synchronized and also uh, tuck uh, formula. So, after symmetry breaking, the it generates a 7 by 7 mass matrix. So finally we have, uh, if, we, uh, if I call this uh, this four standard neutrinos, then we have three active neutrino and four standard neutrinos. Again, we have a dark matter, chi, and dark photon, x, and dark x. Uh, so this is a very brief, similar history of this uh, theory. So uh, around TeV dark matter kinetic decoupled, uh, which determine its relative density. Then the whole dark sector decoupled from standard order thermogas, and the entropy is conserved separately in this sector and this sector. So that we can calculate the effect for uh, a number of uh, neutrinos. Now, uh, because uh, 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 the dark matter type can scatter with the uh, uh, standard neutrino, so. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, this um, mass for this standard neutrino is EV, so it's a rel uh, relative basic particles at the same time. So this particles contribute to the uh, hot dark matter. And uh, because we have a, a, a large self interaction for standard neutrino, so it's not summarized uh, from the uh, neutrino mixing. So we, we can show very easily that. Uh, if the only standard neutrino are relative disk and the time just before BBM, then we have four, uh, uh, four standard neutrino, and uh, this is related with the um, density and uh, neutrino density is uh, it's proportional to its temperature with power of four. So we use the entropy uh, uh, conservation. We can uh, write rewrite and this. So if the uh, if the decoupling temperature is around here, around the uh, GeV, for example, I'm told it's around uh, around the uh, one point seven GeV, then we get a uh, uh, effective uh, number of neutrino around the um, the point five uh, eight, which is very close to the uh, the goal fit from previous uh, discussion. So. If, um, if the dark photon and the dark Higgs are also relative with uh, around beam time, then we, 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 uh, again we can calculate uh, their contribution because uh, the dark, dark, uh, dark photon has a three degree of freedom and dark Higgs can have one, so we have uh, uh, two here because it's, uh, it's divided by the two uh, from neutrino. And this, uh, this factor comes from the fermion and the uh, uh, sonic particular freedom. So we can calculate these two cases then. So this, uh, if uh, these two particles are not re relative mystic, then <coughs> the, the difference is uh, round one. So, so th this case and uh, this case are similar. They were uh, uh, similar. Number Sorry, can you go back to the previous transparency? Yeah. I mean, delta and effective, you say, I mean, the, the, the fact that you get this number yeah. out of four yeah. of course, is because of dilution, entropy dilution yeah, yeah, yeah. between the decoupling temperature and BBM. Mm. Yeah. But so, where are these interactions of neutrino coming to the game here? Uh, because uh, if uh, the interaction uh, you mean the I mean, the, 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 the fact that you had uh, this large potential uh, oh. mixing was uh, suppressed. So if the, if this interaction are very small, then neutri the neutrino, the neutrino oscillation or active neutrino can bring this uh, standard neutrino into equilibrium. Yeah. So then, in that case, the standard neutrino temperature is the same as uh, uh, temperature for active neutrino. So mm -hmm. if in that case, then these two are equal. So that an effect is four. And where does this four come from? Four is, uh, because the we have uh, four species of standard neutrino. Uh, 
This is delta in it. Okay. Yeah. So it's four because you have one Dirac and two. And two I thought because uh, the math matrix is uh, seven by seven, we have yeah. three for active. Yeah, yeah, you have one Dirac and two. So it can compare with the uh, fit from the same data. And this uh, contours amongst the one sigma and the two sigma region. And this is the central value. And the dot nine is the central value for uh, three plus two uh, uh, scenario for uh, neutrino oscillation. So in their fit, they choose the, um, the fourth standard neutrino uh, with mass difference like this, and the uh, fifth standard neutrino this mass difference like this. So the central value for the uh, for the sum of the mass is on this now. So uh, um, in, our, in this model, uh, the region between the two vertical lines are round. So we can see them, uh, we, we can fit the data in one sigma. So it consistent. And uh, this uh, two vertical lines because of the, the uh, decoupling temperature uh, show around this. This is the temperature for uh, QCD confinement. This is the uh, MT because of, uh, besides the standard model uh, theory, we don't have uh, uh, more degree of freedom, so we cannot uh, uh, <coughs> larger than the, uh, the mass of uh, the top mark. So you are having the two two masses in the mass Majorana mass matrix for the right-handed neutrinos, you have masses of the order of electron volts? Yeah, we just choose the two mass for, because we have four standard neutrinos, yeah. so we only choose two to be like this value. The other two can be much lighter, or the Smith angle with the active neutrino could be much smaller, so it, it cannot... Uh, we don't consider. I mean, in these kind of models, there is a strong correlation between mixings and, and masses. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, take yeah. that into account? No, no, because it's 7 by 7 mass metrics. So, yeah. I mean, you don't have so much freedom that you think. So, no. Yeah, maybe. So, the, the, the dark matter is still scattering, scattering with the stellar neutrinos, which determines the dark matter collective couple. Decoupling. So uh, it happens when the scattering scattering rate, uh, this process drops below the half parameter. So the decoup uh, decoupling temperature is given by this formula, is determined by the coupling, the temperature of the standard neutrino, the mass of dark matter, and the mass of the, uh, the media. So the connected decouple of dark matter from the uh, from the relativity particles. In printing the, uh, the metal pulse spectrum, uh, and two, scale, uh, two relevant scales are in, uh, are in printing. The convolving horizon, horizon is like this red. This is just the the, the convolving distance traveled by and relative particles. And also the free streaming length of for dark matter, which is much much smaller than this one because we have uh, we choose. To well, in our case, the matter, the mass for dark matter is TeV, and uh, the uh, the kinetic and uh, kinetic decoupling temperature is uh, MeV or uh, KeV. So it's uh, this one is much smaller than this one. So this uh, this uh, then the decoupling temperature uh, can be uh, translated to a cutoff in the metal pulse spec uh, metal pulse spectrum uh, um, with this uh, matter cutoff. It just uh, basically, it's the mass in this uh, uh, cutoff uh, length. So uh, you can see uh, it's around uh, this value. So if we uh, choose uh, the, uh, this parameter, then we can have around the TV decoupling. And then the, uh, the, the cutoff of the mass power spectrum could be easily around 10 to, uh, 10 to 9 uh, times the mass of the solar system. So which is the, uh, the, the right order for solving the missing set line problem. We, we also, it's very easy to, to show that we have a right 
uh, and velocity dependent cross section. So we, if we choose the dark matter mass around uh, uh, one TeV and the mediate mass, the dark photon mass is uh, four MeV. The phase coupling around uh, 0.5, then we can plot this uh, uh, scattering cross section of its mass, and and it's uh, it's a function of the velocity of dark matter particle. So uh, for Dwarf's galaxy, its velocity is uh, 20 km per second. So it's uh, around the one uh, bar per GeV, so it's very large. But for uh, for Mercury size galaxy, it's uh, uh, around uh, maybe uh, two orders smaller. But for, uh, and for galaxy cluster, so its uh, velocity is uh, 1,000 uh, 1, km per second. The even smaller uh, cross section, so which can satisfy all the constraints from astrophysical. So this is uh, some features of this model. It's a normalizable theory for total dark matter and the cell neutrino. And the dark matter self scattering and the uh, scattering of cell neutrino can solve the three controversies for total dark matter. Also, the this EV cell neutrino can fit. They, uh, some neutrino uh, constellation alumni, and it can also contribute to the dark radiation or whole dark matter, and uh, reconcile the tension between isot, uh, isot two and Planck theta. So finally, is the summary. Uh, I have uh, uh, briefly introduced the three controversies in the cold dark matter paradigm, which are the cast core versus core, and too big to fail, and the missing satellite problem. So um, around these uh, possible solutions, uh, several interacting dark matter is uh, or, or attractive solution. Uh, we can uh, we show an example with a, uh, a model for self interacting dark matter with a discrete uh, this three symmetry. This this three symmetry is a relic of uh, uh, a U1P symmetry. And also uh, we discussed the connection between dark matter and uh, the standard trainer. We have a slightly of very simple model. We call this uh, mu lambda MDM M mix because we have both cold dark matter and hot dark matter. We based on the exterior you want the symmetry. Then we can connect the standard trino and dark matter and solve the missing standard problem. Thank you. So you, at some point you mentioned this, you showed this, some plots from this Bregman paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is, what's the biggest difference between what you're doing and what Bregman's doing? Uh, um, the difference there? is that first they, they have a uh, effective theory, so they, uh, because they still need a mixing between uh, stellar neutrino and the active neutrino. So it's, uh, they increase the by dimension five of the also, they have uh, one MEV and uh, one EV stand chain. So you can see that, uh, and they can only consist with the neutron uh, roaming in two sigma around this range. Because uh, they, uh, this uh, vertical uh, range are predicted by their model, and uh, this uh, blue, uh, blue, dark blue is uh, one sigma range from CMP. So the all, only at all numbers here. So it's in two sigma range. And the uh, all model is uh, normalizable. And also we have uh, four uh, four stand trainers, so we can provide the uh, one sigma field. That's the uh, of improvement. Mm -hmm. But dark matter wise, I dark guess matter is basically, basically the same because yeah. if you introduce a uh, MEV mediator, then it's enough to yes. get the mentioned that in principle you can alleviate the tension with biceps. So yeah. let's assume the bicep goes away and mm -hmm. R is zero. That, that, are you constrained by that? Uh, that because the constraint from um, from the uh, num effect number of uh, standard neutrinos or the effect number of neutrinos. So here. Yeah. So well, basically okay. it's uh, constraint on this. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can So let's say it's zero. Oh they will okay we can provide then what happens? I'm just trying to understand again. Yeah, yeah, then we can, that. we can see that uh, 
Okay. So, so you, it's within two sigma rather than one sigma. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I put that time equal to epidic to zero, you can still uh, mm -hmm. more or less. Uh, oh, but I mean, what happens if the time f is epidic to zero? So then what happens? Then. Mm. Then that you know, facts comes to more than say, mm -hmm. you know what? Then then epidic to zero. Mm -hmm. So then what is the uh, Obviously, I think still it can still survive okay. because uh, we could choose the mass of this uh, standard machine to have it. Mm -hmm. Then in that case, it, it does not contribute to the data and effect. Because in, in this case, uh, I only consider the mass for standard machine on any way or even lighter. So it can be relativistic and same time. So, so what I'm trying to understand is that you added the Arduino. <coughs> Yeah. Because he wanted to have a delta and f different from zero, but for the dark matter, it really didn't care. Uh, uh, because if you can decouple, it means you never really care about it. Oh, for what, dark what, matter. What, does it do, what, 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 does it, what is good for? I mean, for well, dark for, matter, you only need this. It's, uh, it's connected to decouple on the K. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then uh, you, you can still have a stand, you know, the mass is uh, K. So. But again, it's just me that I'm trying to explain myself. In the limit where this effect effective from the experiment is zero, mm -hmm. you can understand it by making the mass of the neutrino IV. Well, in that case, you wouldn't explain the reactor anomaly. No, no. Right, exactly. So, I mean, so basically, you have, uh, yeah, so you wouldn't be able to do that. So here is because you want to explain yeah. so many things at the same time. <coughs> For the kinetic decoupling, you need you need to be sterile material, and you just do this with active. It can uh, it can be active neutrino, but the active neutrino I think it's a uh, constraint. It's constraint uh, because you have a you have a new gate action for active neutrino. Mm -hmm. So I think it's constrained by some meson decay, mm -hmm. and also uh, from some neutrino oscillation. You have a gate action, new gate action. Or at the neutrino, let me use it. Is there a way to check this one? Well, yeah, the dark matter can only to uh, two k boson, two dark uh, dark photon. Dark photon can decay to standard neutrinos. The standard neutrino can oscillate to active neutrino. The active neutrino can be detected by ice cube. Yeah, that's a, a way to detect test. I mean, that would test active neutrinos, not necessarily this model. Yeah, right. That, I mean, then, uh, the presence of active neutrinos does not matter. Oh, another, another you're possible. imagining that they oscillate, I guess, into actives by the time they reach ice cube, right? Is that the idea? In the model, I, did, I didn't introduce the interaction between dark matter and dark, uh, dark uh, peaks. Suppose the dark matter is coupled to dark Higgs, the dark Higgs is mixing with Higgs, so you can have a direct uh, detection. Then dark matter can scatter with the nuclear. Okay. Yeah, so Sorry, yeah, okay, I understand. But I mean, that here is not in this model yet. No, no right. And once you do that, I might not actually need the psi anymore. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. if you do that, maybe I don't need the psi in the first place. This is an add on. But Sorry, I have another question. Does the Higgs decay into the dark uh, photon? The Higgs? Uh, that's uh, uh, if the... Yeah, yeah. It does. So there is also a possible invisible width of the Higgs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you check that? Topic? Well, because the mass for the... Uh, uh, the mass for the uh, for the dark Higgs is MeV, and the carbon, this coupling is... Uh, the Higgs photon coupling it should around 10 to minus... 8 or 10 to minus 7. So then the invisible decay is very simple. But I mean, if there is a kinetic mixing, then there is Higgs to gamma gamma that goes into X to gamma gamma. Right? But then it goes into the maximum. I mean, but that's also very small. Yeah. 